Hey everyone, welcome back to 996 The Howl. Like always, during the summer, I'm on vacation during the draft week, and some might say, why, why are you planning on going, going on vacation during the draft week? And, uh, you know, usually the draft is end of June, not, you know, middle of July or what have you. It's been crazy, you know, still free agency hasn't happened, usually that's July 1st. That's next week, but things have just been wild. This whole draft was wild. So much speculation, so much drama. It was hard to get away from it. I stood packed that Shane Wright would be drafted first overall by Montreal, but man, I, I actually cannot believe they went with Slavkowski first. And then New Jersey comes right up with Simo Nemich, and I was like, what are the Coyotes going to do? I wanted Cooley. I've seen and read so much about Cooley the past couple weeks. I said in my own draft video that the Coyotes should draft Cooley. You know, offensive, highly talented playmaker. Um, you know, I'll go into his negatives and positives later. But, you know, I, I didn't read or watch too much of Shane Wright. And... You know, what I read from him and watched from other scouts and other hockey commenters was he's average or pretty good at all aspects of the ice, but nothing really jumps at the page, or jumps off the page to you. And as a, a projected number one overall, uh, those types of players should excite you, should take you out, out of your seat and should command the prestige of being number one overall. But I guess Shane Wright didn't do it. I'm sure Bill Armstrong and company were like, I can't believe Shane Wright is right here within our grasp. But they decided to go with Cooley. Honestly, I, I don't know what their decision was. I could say that the Coyotes knew they were picking third overall. Shane Wright was a top two pick for like months and months until the last few weeks where all these rumors were circulating that Slavkowski might go to Montreal, might go number one. So for me, I think the management group and scouts didn't really watch Wright too much. But on the other hand, it's their job to watch Wright just in case other teams make mistakes. You should be prepared to go for number one overall if he doesn't, if the teams don't go for him. Um, I'm sure the Cowboys did their homework, but I honestly just think they wanted Logan Cooley, and I wanted Cooley. I could have gone either or with Cooley or Wright. I was just happy that we were getting guaranteed one of them. You know, if the Cowboys did go off the board and get Cutter Gautier or, you know, that other defenseman, Jiracek, I would have been pretty disappointed, but I'm happy with Cooley. And uh, I'm happy that they had a decision between Wright and Cooley. It was funny. It was awesome. You know, everything's so exciting around the Coyotes. I'm sure a lot of other fans thought the Coyotes would have gone for Wright. But Cooley's a guy. And then they, they made another trade with, um, I'm forgetting the team now, uh, San Jose to get 11th overall. And that's where Bill Armstrong gets his big centerman. His six foot four centerman and Connor Geeky, you know, 18 years old, six foot four, 190 pounds. That guy's going to grow, grow up to be a monster, a typical Bill Armstrong type centerman that I was fearful they would have went with Cutter Gauthier with their third overall. But luckily, you know, they made that trade to get Connor Geeky. I'll do a whole video of all their draft picks uh, Sunday night. This video is just about Cooley. Uh, yeah, I'm about you know, a couple beers in. So let's just jump into it. I made this board like two days ago before I went on vacation. I took it with me on the road trip, hoping they would draft Cooley, knowing they would draft Cooley. Luckily, I didn't have to redo this board with Shane Wright. Um, I would have never thought that would happen. But, you know, let's get into it. I'm sorry for the lighting. You know, I'm, I'm in this Airbnb. What are you going to do? You know, just off the cuff, kind of casual things right here. So, this is his draft year. You know, he had 27 goals, 48 assists, 75 points. In 51 games played for the United States Development League. I'm terrible at knowing how the minor league system works in America. But, apparently the USDP is its own under-18 league. But also a team that participates 
in the United States Hockey League. So they play some games in that league as well. Kind of confusing, but in that USHL league, he got 13 goals, 23 assists, 36 points in 24 games. So he's a point-per-game player in whichever league you put him in. Um, great numbers in his development league. I believe he was second overall in that development league. And then the World Junior Championship under 18. Still a point per game. Three goals, seven assists, ten points. In six games played where the Americans got the silver medal. Now what's interesting is the World Junior Championship is going to retake place in August. It was cancelled in December due to the lockdowns and restrictions and what have you. So now that's happening in August. You know, Dylan Gunther will be on Team Canada. And now you got Logan Cooley on the United States. I'm sure Connor Geeky, I honestly don't know if he's Canadian or American. Should have looked that up. But I'm sure he'll be playing in the World Junior Championship in August as well. Um, some pointers, he's committed to the NCAA for University of Minnesota which was a point I made in the draft video I made, which is why I wanted Cooley, because I didn't want a player that expected to play in the NHL right away. I believe Slavkovsky wants to play in the NHL right away. Uh, he's got a big body for it. The way he protects the puck around the boards, just watching Slavkovsky play. Uh, he played against men in the Finnish leagues, played against men in the Olympics and the World Cup. He wants to play, and he pretty much looks ready. He's a big boy. Um, still think Montreal should have went with Wright, but I was scared the Coyotes went with Slavkowski. You know, he'd be a bit jaded that, you know, the Coyotes aren't going to be competitive this upcoming season, and pretty sure the next season, too, they won't be competitive. So I want a player who's still going to develop, and the NCAA is a perfect spot for Cooley to cook in the oven a little bit longer. Um... He said before he models his game after Clayton Keller. He loves Clayton Keller. He's excited to join the Coyotes organization. He knows the situation they're in. He knows they're in a rebuild. He mentions they have great prospects coming up, and he's going to be one of those prospects coming up. So he likes the situation. I'm sure he prefers a, a cup contender, obviously, but you know he's aware of the situation was positive whenever talking about Arizona. He said it was the city he wants to be in when he was drafted or something like that. He'll be, you know, comfortable playing in a college arena since he's going to the NCAA anyways. So, um, and also he's comparable to Braden Point, Mitch Marner, and the aforementioned Clayton Keller. He's a small guy, which is a negative. You know, not a Bill Armstrong type player, Five foot ten. 179 pounds, bit on the small side, but uh, he's just a creative playmaker with tremendous offensive awareness and ability to make plays that you don't even see yourself as a hockey watcher. Um, he finds the open areas, finds his teammates. He also goes to the hard areas to score. He's a great competitor. He's not afraid to go to the middle of the ice, which I like, and I know that's a Bill Armstrong type player. Bill Armstrong does not want perimeter type players. He wants players that drive the middle, are not scared to go to the middle, are not scared to compete along the boards, compete hard for pucks and not give up on plays. He has a dynamic transition game, taking pucks in from the defensive zone into the offensive zone. He, uh, One of these scouting reports said he, he creates such high volume of high danger shots and high danger passes and on the other hand he completes them at a really high rate so it seems like he makes a lot of these unbelievable high danger plays to create great scoring chances and completes them at the same time so that you know something comes out of them you know a good shot a rebound a, an offensive face off what have you make the goalie make a desperation save uh, moving off yeah I just said that you know, high volume plus high completion rate. That's great to see. And he's deceptive. He makes these highly skilled plays to maneuver around the ice and around the opposition. I remember Rick Tockett always talking about deception in, game, in people's games, especially Connor Garland. He used to de deceive goaltenders. Whenever the Coyotes were going through a bad stretch, Rick Tockett would complain that 
They're not using enough decep deception in their game to make the goalie move laterally. All the shots are, you know, hitting the crest of his jersey. So it's going to have a, a, a deceptive player who has a lot of offensive pieces in his toolkit. And uh, he's got no panic in his game. He's comfortable with the puck. He knows how to handle the puck. He knows how to make great plays at high speed with the puck. So, you know, that's hard to teach players. So the fact that, you know, he's already good at making high tempo, high IQ hockey plays that usually result in high scoring chances, you know, that that's the mark of a high pick. Um, some negatives, you know, average play away from the puck. It seems like his defensive awareness and his play away from the puck leaves a lot to be desired. But you can teach defense. Like, we all know this, that you can't teach skill. It's really hard to teach offensive ability and offensive awareness. But you can teach defensiveness. You know, John Tortorella, when he goes into teams, you know, he gets them to play good defense. Takes them to on a cup run. You know, Andre Turini, as our example, he made Clinton Keller... Barrett Hayden and Nick Schmaltz into consistent penalty killers. All three of those players had their best defensive stats and seasons in their career so far. He's made them into responsible defensive players, while at the same time they had great offensive years and career years, all three of them. Um, Hayden's career is so small that obviously it was a career year because he played so many games, but Schmaltz and Keller had career offensive production years, and also improved their defensive game just so significantly. So you can teach defense, and under the right coaching system, these players will want to play defense with you. And uh, he may overhandle the puck, you know, because he, he's always touching the puck and, you know, dipsy doodling around in the offensive zone. He might, you know, bite off more than he can chew, I run into a wave of opposition and, and not make the right play. So that's that's a concern too. Maybe a bit too overconfident with the puck. But I'm sure going to college and playing in the NHL will, will you know make him a bit more modest and look for his teammates to make plays. It doesn't always have to be him. So he's got some kinks to work out in his game. But you know a centerman, highly skilled, speedy, dangle type guy... The fact that we drafted Geeky as well, we, that's two centermen already. I'm making this video before they make their uh, their third first round pick, I believe 32nd. I, I'm making this video before they make that pick, so I don't know if they selected a centerman, but going into this draft, I wanted centermen. I wanted the focus to be centermen. Our, our pipeline in centermen is very shallow. You know, Barrett Hayden is our best center prospect right now you got McBain and Smith who Bill Armstrong acquired to fill in the gaps to wait for these other centermen to come up you know you got Mannix Landry and Sam Lipkin that are listed as centermen still in the Coyotes pipeline haven't made it over to the American Hockey League just yet so don't know too much about them but now you add Cooley and Geeky to that center pipeline and whoever else they draft you know, with their 32nd pick or their second round picks or some other picks in the other round this draft. So we'll see what happens. Um, Chikrin, the rumors have been swirling. Maybe he got traded while I was making this video, but I'll keep an eye on that. You know, I think Chikrin would have gone for a higher draft pick, maybe that 11th pick, maybe even higher. Maybe for Cutter Gauthier, I could have seen a trade with Chikrin involved. So Bill Armstrong gets his big centerman. But he ends up finding another avenue to get it by trading his later picks for his big centerman and Connor Geeky. Like I said, Sunday night, I'll have a full draft video for all the players they selected in the first two rounds. But happy with things have gone. They got Cooley, who I wanted. And they also focused on drafting another centerman, a big centerman, in Connor Geeky. Um, I barely drank out of this beer. That's it for me. Hopefully you guys are able to see the board, able to see me. It was a crazy draft. It's always a crazy draft with the Coyotes involved. Um, just I'm glad. I'm happy with the picks. And uh, let's keep it rolling here. Let's keep it rolling with the positive news. Keep it rolling with, you know, 
the good mojo, the first class organization. Let's just keep it going. Hopefully no secret. Katie Strang athletic articles creep up in the next few days or few weeks that uh, bring the morale down. I'm liking the morale around the team um, despite their off-ice situation with the new arena. I think they just got to lean into it, celebrate it. It's a temporary short-term thing. Enjoy it. And uh, hopefully the, the shovels dig in that new uh, Tempe Arena location. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Uh, if you like what you see, spread the word. And as always, like I said, thank you for your support.